we get approval of today's agenda? I move. Thank you. Thank you. Um, minutes. Any corrections or additions? Should make a motion to approve the minutes as read. Oh, we do. Submit. Submit. Yes. 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 Uh, anybody have any additions? Bill? No. You're good. Okay. Then let me begin with the chair's report. It seems that every day brings a change over here. Uh, not not all good, needless to say. The MTA committee meetings and board meetings were held earlier this week. I will discuss much of what happened during them in my board report. Lisa testified during the public session at the board about the impending fare increase, which is no longer pending, obviously, unless you count April 21 effective date as pending. On Monday, she... Well, that's the date. Mm -hmm. On Monday, she testified at the uh, Transit Committee Subway and Bus uh, meeting about the continuing saga of the L-Line non-shutdown and that so many questions remain unanswered and continue to remain unanswered, unfortunately. She applauded the newly announced public meetings, which will be held starting March 7th. I will give you the dates during the board meeting, board uh, report. Ellen testified as well about the improved subway performance and how critical it is that the fast forward plan be funded to ensure on time performance continues to increase and major delays continue to decrease, which if you saw the news recently, um, they were really amazing improvement in on time performance and travel time and dwell time and all of those issues. Cleanliness. Yeah, cleanliness went up too. And you know, having the track bed cleaned with these new uh, machines really helps ensure that the drains are clean and we don't have water issues as well. Um, in an effort to cut down on paper, this testimony and all the others that um, I'm referring to can be found on the website, pcac.org. So if you need them, you can see them there and print them out on your own. On Tuesday, Mayor de Blasio and Governor Cuomo announced a 10-point plan to transform and fund the MTA. Lisa issued a press statement about how the reorganization seems to be adding an unnecessary layer of bureaucracy to the MTA and that it is unclear how the right of representatives will be appointed, among other things. And I was in Albany during that. That was uh, an interesting time to be there. To be in, it was an interesting time to be in Albany when the announcement was made. Because everybody just went, <coughs> the governor and the mayor are sitting down together? And well, then it just raises more questions than it answers. They issued a joint press release. They were in separate places, however. <laughs> uh, Lisa testified in Albany, as she just told you, on January 30th at the joint budget hearing on the transportation components of the fiscal year 20 executive budget. Since then, Governor Cuomo provided additional detail to his FY20 executive budget with the release of his 30-day budget amendments. The amendments include significant proposals for the MTA including, although this is now not the case because the Regional Transit Committee now... We don't know that. Okay. I don't think it's in addition to the Mass Transit Expert Panel. We don't know. Panel. They do two different things. I think, mean, well, that would really be an end run around the board in so many ways that I didn't even conceive of yet. <laughs> but anyway, the Mass Transit Expert Panel would be tasked with setting congestion pricing structure and rates and providing very broad oversight of MTA finances and operations including developing and implementing a reorganization plan, some of which was announced yesterday. The amendments would also change language regarding board member terms to essentially term limit us to the same terms as the original appointing elected official. We do not know if the, if the new regional transit committee that the governor announced yesterday to review capital projects would replace or supersede the panel of experts, but we will be finding that out, I am sure, in short order. On February 20th, Lisa testified at the first of five Senate majority, Senate majority hearings on mass transit. In her testimony, she reiterated PCAC's support for congestion pricing, but took exception to the mass transit expert panel as another layer of bureaucracy that would further dilute the board's authority, especially since we do not know who will appoint the members of this uh, expert panel and for <laughs> Regional Transit Committee. <laughs> Although, actually, that was spelled out that it would be the mayor, the governor, and um, members of the legislature that would have been the, the Regional Transit Committee. But we don't know how many for each or any of those. Well, that it would be made up of subway riders and drivers. Yes, yeah. but no commuter rail uh, users, which 
it seems totally ridiculous since the MTA represents commuter rail riders as well. <laughs> it was the first time in five years that an oversight hearing has been held. The next one will be held on Long Island on March, well, that's tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, we'll be there tomorrow. And another is tentatively scheduled in Westchester on March 8th. This past Sunday, Ellen attended a press conference about the improved subway performance figures. MTA President Pat Foy, Ronnie Hakem, and Andy Byford each spoke and emphasized the improved performance, but that there is still a long way to go, and funding the fast forward plan was the best way to get there. <coughs> last week, Sheila attended an event called Reversal, and the L in the last L there is the big L for the L train, a public forum on the partial shutdown of the L train. The panel discussion covered the impacts of the L train shutdown reversal on riders and businesses in Brooklyn. It was mentioned that after several community meetings, most riders preferred a full shutdown for the work to be completed in a faster time frame. The lack of community involvement in the reversal and the ability to plan for long-term resiliency were also discussed. And that's just the least of the new program's problems. On February 14th, Ellen and I met with Brooklyn Borough President Adam's staff and discussed the governor's announcement that the partial L-line shutdown would move forward. I raised concerns about how silica dust would be mitigated, especially on trains as they move through stations, and the crowding that will occur from 20-minute headways on a very, very busy line. Not to mention the possibility of, en of exit only for Bedford Avenue, 1st Avenue, and 3rd Avenue, which is being kept very quiet. I also mentioned the value of moving to weekend shutdowns for the project, which could speed the completion date and reduce costs, much as we heard from President Byford. It was good to hear the uh, Borough President's representative speak on these issues at the board meeting yesterday. Mm -hmm. Anthony Drummond did a good job. And, and raised all of the issues that we raised with him, which was great. Mm -hmm. On February 6th, Carol and Bradley attended an open house event hosted by New York City Transit's system-wide accessibility team to discuss and help identify the next 50 stations that will be made accessible. And I was there too, wasn't I? Yes, yes. and me. <laughs> for, the long, for the whole meeting. It was, it was a great meeting, actually. Alex did a great job. Yes. The discussion was lively, and the participants were well informed about why their particular station should be on the list. No surprise there. This conversation will be ongoing as the Stantec survey of all the remaining inaccessible stations will be completed by the end of the year. And at the meeting the other day, Alex said they are up to having looked at 180 stations already. So it was 160 at the end of 2018, and they're already done another 20. So they are really moving. Every station will definitely have been surveyed by the end of this calendar year. Bert, you look stunned. I'm, I'm confused. Surveyed, but not approved. No. Yeah. No, the, the survey staff. is just to see if it's physically feasible and what it will cost to do that. Um, you know, political considerations Correct. and real estate considerations are not part of it. Each and station was given a red, yellow, or green uh, as, as possibilities. So there are actually stations that are red. That would be that, um, those are difficult, but you can't say never to them. You know, money buys a lot. <laughs> those are difficult, but not impossible. Um, earlier this month, Bradley and Sheila attended the outreach event hosted by the Brooklyn Family Support Services Advisory Council, of which Chris Wright is a member and for which, and who helped to organize that event. Just a reminder that um, a week from today, which is next Thursday, is the full PCAC meeting. We have invited Jano Lieber to, come <coughs> to speak about uh, all of the construction and and major capital projects that are planned for New York City Transit, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North. And um, we're waiting to hear. He's trying to see from his people if they can get it all together in time for next Thursday. And, if, and probably if he'll be allowed to speak to any of these matters, since everything has a tight lid on it these days. Um, so let me quickly go into the board report, because it's, uh, it's quite something. Um, OK, so. As everybody, of course, knows by now, um, yeah, yesterday's meeting, the fare hikes were authorized. Um, the fare hikes for New York City Transit and Metro North and Long Island Railroad will take place April 21st. The toll hikes will take place March 31. You know the big fair booklet thing that I gave Ellen okay. to give to you? Right. Uh, no. That should be in there. Okay. I'm not 100 percent. I'm sure they will be um, with the new rates, but I just don't know when that takes effect. Okay. Um, so 
while everybody is glad handing and saying, "Wow, the base fare is, is kept," you know, we're we're doing great. No fair hike. What happened yesterday is a, in, is by far a fair hike for the majority of users of transit. Let's not kid ourselves by doing away with the bonus, which was the thing that economically challenged New Yorkers bought the most. Uh, they may be poor, but they're not stupid, and they buy the card that gives them a bonus and a free ride after so many. That was done away with, um, and I spoke against that yesterday, <coughs> needless to say. Um, there is a small increase in the weekly, um, 32 to $33, and a $6 increase in the monthly. Um, there are commensurate increases in Metro North and Long Island Railroad. However, the $500 cap that used to be on um, no fare hikes over a $500 monthly commutation was reduced to $460, so in many ways that's good news for riders of the commuter rails. Uh, needless to say, their fares are pretty darn high already. I would have liked to have seen if you purchased a monthly Metro North or Long Island Railroad commutation ticket, a discount on a monthly Metro card, uh, but that did not happen. Um, I was told that my idea to, some, to try to take away the sting of this increase for a two-hour unlimited use of the Metro card of the system for after your first swipe, um, while it didn't get voted on, probably doesn't require a public hearing and could be instituted at, at another date after um, the chief financial officer and um, and Commissioner Schwartz, Commissioner Schwartz looks at it. He didn't quite understand the uh, what I was saying yesterday, so he sent it to me. So I will do that. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, it's pretty simple uh, concept, but um, I, will, I will be sent. Bob Ferrandi definitely understands that. I understood. How was there? You know, for those that attended yeah. the Staten Island Fair Hike hearing, for instance, there were a lot of complaints from riders of express buses because they either got stuck on the New Jersey Turnpike or on the Gowanus. By the time they got to the Midtown or Downtown destinations, and those folks were, would have switched to another subway or a bus, the, uh, the time limit was up, and they had to be issued three legs of transfer. A two-hour after your first swipe would probably be fine for people from the furthest region, from the Rockaways to Staten Island to the North Bronx, to Eastern Queens. Um, everybody, you know, was nodding their heads. That's a great idea, but it did not get to a vote yesterday. So we will see where that where that part goes. Um, as far as the bridges and tunnels, and it, and it came up yesterday, if you take, oh, and by the way, in the governor and mayor's announcements of no more, you know, they're going to hold fair increase to 2% a year. Well, that's what we're getting now. 4% every other year is 2% a year. It's not like they've just invented this wheel. So, wonderful. Yeah. Um, the congestion pricing plan that the two politicians um, came up with still has a lot of unknowns. <laughs> that we came up with. No. Does that mean they're going to increase it every year? That is unknown. Um, discounts for residents of Manhattan are unknown. Dis um, the charge for trucks, is it per axle or is it the truck on the four higher vehicles who have to traverse the 61st Street boundary maybe 20, 30, 40 times in a given day? Is that a one-time charge? <coughs> is it an every-time charge? Um, That's what the Mass Transit Expert Panel was charged with doing, which is where it differs from the Regional Transit Committee, which is overseeing the capital. I see. How many levels of bureaucracy will there then be? It's like an onion. Yeah. It makes you, you cry. Yeah, it makes you cry. All right. Um, so we don't know. We don't know those things. Um, what What are ambulances going to be charged? Um, yeah, Sharon. Can we just look at what they do in London or other places? So they, they were actually the, the the way that they got the mayor to agree was to in fact look at um, exemptions for people who travel um, below six south of sixty first street that's what it is now to medical appointments who have no other means of travel um, and a lot of it's medical based so that ambulances would be excluded and other health care um, requirements but I think that part of the conversation is how to do that and how because they're as they set up the gantries and the technology you know how they have to which has to go through NEPA by the way um, which is uh, a, a quite quite a process plus if, if it's an ambulance that's on the FDR and it's getting out at one of the hospital complexes north of 61st Street you know Lenox Hill or Mount Sinai or any of those you're not you wouldn't be subject to the uh, 
to the congestion fee, obviously, because you would have been on the FDR and then getting off north of 61st Street. But just in general, can't, can't the, the um, practices in other cities be adapted? Um, I'm sure they will be looking at yeah. some of those, it's, as long as Andy Byford is, is still here, and uh, I hope he stays here, but they are taking many things away from him in this whole reorganization. Although I will say at yesterday's press conference, Freddie was, was clear to say that the fun, some of the in-house functions, be it IT, HR, and I don't know how you're going to do HR, but IT and some other uh, procurement and other things for the Long Island Railroad and Metro North could be combined. He interestingly left New York City Transit out of that when he was speaking to the press at the end of the meeting yesterday. But, you know, they are taking some functions of fast forward, apparently away from Andy. Um, I really hope we don't lose Andy because I think he's, a, he's really a terrific resource. Um, I understand that these experts um, that were brought in to avert the L train shutdown with this new technology will also be asked to look at ongoing projects and our, our signal system. And uh, you might have seen my quote in, in the post. I said, we just brought on a world-renowned signal expert in the person of Pete Tomlin. I'd much rather hear what he has to say about the signal. <laughs> but well, Freddie did say that he um, <clears throat> he issued a reaffirmation of support for Andy Byford and Bass Waller. But we don't know. With all due respect, Freddie does not know, nor does anybody else know, how much longer he is going to be. The no. the uh, the chair of board. I mean, he'll stay, be on the board because he was appointed for a term stated. Uh, but to get back to your other thing with the congestion pricing, basically, what the governor did was convince De Blasio, and there were more things than just about the the hospitals and and the everything else. Sure. It, there was, but. With a, and I'm sure it would come because for the mayor to drop his millionaire's tax and say he didn't think it, he could do it at this point. Obviously, there was, if you read between the lines, you, you understand. Uh, but also, in the, uh, in the original congestion pricing, which we did, what, two years ago or, or whatever, there was a consideration, and I believe that is what the governor was working off of. Uh, for not only hospitals, but also people who could show that they had doctor's appointments and or they would be reimbursed. It wasn't clear, but if, if for any kind of a medical thing, not just in an ambulance, because there are so many doctors on either side of 61st Street that it became, you know. Well, one of the sticking points that I'm sure you know because you're connected politically, um, they're getting a lot of blowback in Albany. That's why many of the top MTA folks are in Albany today mm -hmm. is because they are not looking to pass congestion pricing when all, virtually all of the proceeds go to the subway and bus system and very almost nothing goes to the commuter rail well, system. Mm -hmm. That is likely to change. To but be, behind, behind the scenes, even though it was reported on New York One, the Long Island people, and especially in the state senate, are insisting that they, they will organize against it. And part of it is because they're really pissed off about them, the mayor, uh, that the governor blamed them for, at, or said that they didn't do enough for Amazon. So now they're showing that they're doing yeah. enough for yeah. their constituents. There's bad blood. And so there is bad blood. And so there is but going to be. A transfusion could help. What? A transfusion could help. A transfusion? It depends what, what, whether it's AO or, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. No, but, but seriously, that that's why from what I've heard is that Long Island and Metro North, because don't forget yes. Andrea Stewart Cousins is from Westchester, from Yonkers. Yep. from Yonkers, so that there will be also consideration for, not that the Long Island Railroad is making the most noise, but uh, there will be also be consideration for Metro North and some and that there should be. So as part Those of folks are going to have to pay the toll, yeah. the congestion fee. Shouldn't they get something? I mean, the, obviously many of them switch to the subway and bus system and they'll get something there, but I, I think there's so, not a problem. Yeah, but, we, but, that's what we called for was that there, you know, from the, I mean, even yeah. before this announcement that if money's going to come in from congestion pricing, it has to fund the, the system. The system. Not just the subway, even though, you know, that would be um, too, meanwhile, those of us on the board who were alarmed by the aversion of the L shutdown and who were promised an independent consultant to help us sift through the various plans, 
are still waiting for the said independent consultant. Um, I, I emailed. Said any yeah, and I, I emailed Polly, who was supposedly on the committee of, of a selection committee to look at the names for independent consultants who have had no business with MTA in prior years. Um, and she said, would have been nice, but nothing yet. So we are we are hearing nothing yet. Meanwhile, the the new L plan obviously is moving forward, and what this so-called independent consultant may likely turn out to be is just someone that looks at how it is going, but not help us pick between mm -hmm. the plans and choose the correct plan. Well, that's and what Freddie had said from the beginning, and then it went to what you were asking for, and then I went back to what he was saying, and then it I went wasn't back. just me; others were oh, asking I, I, for I it mean, too. Use. Yeah, use. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Bill. Is there a starting date yet? Um, it is still April 27, as far as I know. Still. Still. Wait, or is it? Because it's already started. Right, Sheila? Well, well it's, work, it's preliminary the prep work. work. It's been going on. Yeah. It's the prep work because they're, they're still getting that still on schedule. When riders see the service plan, the lack of the full panorama of alternatives that were planned originally, the fact that they may not be, enter, be able to enter at three stations, the fact that They'll see workmen with masks on, but they won't be wearing any. That's going to go over really well. We and, how, and when they see how long this fix takes, and then that it won't be good for nearly as long, I've got real concerns. Yes, Stuart. That, that was my question, you know, when Andy was here. and He didn't answer me, but what is the change in the useful life? And I think, you know, by switching plans, uh, and are we just buying time, but then at some other point in the future we're saddling another well, group? Well, it's clear when, when, when the next Canarsie tube fix will need to be done, the present governor will no longer be governor. Mm -hmm. uh, so it won't be his <laughs> you know, but Have they said how many? You know. um, I've heard 10 to 15. I've heard less than that by some, and I've heard more than I've that by some. I've heard 20. But I have heard mm. lots of transit professionals express worry and concern about this plan. So I think we should be on record then. Oh, we are. Oh, we are. No, I mean, with the, you know, with the reduction in the life. I'm going to be speak, I'm gonna speak to some more of these folks who, who contact me every now and then who, who just cannot believe what's going on here, to be honest. The other question was whether it needed federal, any federal approval. Yeah, well, at the, at the, Trudy remembers, she was there and Chris was there. Yeah. Many of us were there. At that press conference that was held by jointly by Borough Presidents Brewer and Adams, um, both, co both two members of Congress, um, Nidia, Carolyn Maloney Nidia and Nidia, Nidia Velasquez, both said that they would ask the FTA. And, and just so that you know. That was know, during the shutdown, so now they're back, so. No, no, but the, at the press conference they said it, and they have both followed to with, uh, with an official request to asking the FTA if they need to, not asking for FTA approval, but asking if the FTA asking the FTA if they have if they the FTA has to approve or review this new thing because there is federal money involved. Uh, you, you, you're in touch with Carolyn. Has she got a response? I've been I've been in touch with both of them as of today. As of they, they well no yesterday I didn't speak to her. She was involved with some other stuff I yesterday so, yes. in Washington. Uh, but no, as of last Friday, there had not been a not but they did request, but making, again, I'm saying, making it very clear that asking the FTA if they had to get involved, because that's what they said, both of them said at the press conference also. Well, federal funds are, are involved in this, so. Uh, yeah, but th that's why they went to the FTA, right, right, but exactly. it's, is the federal funds just for repairing the, the, uh, the L line or for a specific plan. That's the whole. So I actually looked up, looked that up a bit, um, because to see if there would need to be a change in the transportation improvement program for the yeah. And the description of the project is apparently vague enough that it does not need to be um, reapplied. However, that doesn't mean that the FTA can't they, rule they against that a, decision. They made a pledge at the press conference and to the media that and to their constituents that they were going to ask this of the FTA and that is why they've done this. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Okay. Okay, so um, one of the one of the big things that was approved, um, if you're a frequent user of Penn Station and particularly 
the Seventh Avenue end of the station on the Long Island Concourse, where yeah. you know it is a bottleneck. It's a madhouse. There has been some work there recently, um, but there is now a new plan um, arrived at between the MTA and Vornado, who runs most of the uh, real estate in the terminal, to totally rebuild, put new entrances. Um, that got approved yesterday. Um, I'm sure there will be a lot of pain during the construction, but there will be a new entrance directly from the street from 7th Avenue into the new Long Island Concourse. Um, it's, it's a, if you want to go on, on the MTA's website and look at it, this is a major improvement to, um, to Penn Station fluidity. Um, the, actually, the, the retail spaces are going to be moved back. They're going to be made smaller to allow for this uh, enlarged concourse. But anyone that sees the 7th Avenue end of the Long Island Concourse knows there are real problems at Penn Station. So this is, this is a great step. And the state... Well, aren't they working on the turnstiles? They are yeah, doing that, yes. Right. But this, the, is, this is widened the corridor by 27 feet. Yeah, it's, it's a major a addition. Um, so is this part of the capital program? I think so. Yes, because Jana was talking about yes, it. Yes, and um, there was doubt whether whether the state would produce it in writing. Uh, the actual the memorandum of understanding committed the MTA to the entire cost of this, and that made some of the board very ang anxious yesterday, mm -hmm. oh, or Monday, I should say, when the committee meetings were, and uh, Jana was able to produce the letter from uh, from the state that says the state is going to pay for half of it. So. That is great news for um, users of both the 7th Avenue line and, and Penn Station. Um, so everybody has heard about the tragedy the other day in Westbury. Mm -hmm. um, as it turns out, the folks who went around the gate were fleeing uh, because they had another fender bender a little bit earlier, so they were fleeing the police. Yeah. This is never a good thing. To, but when the gates are down, why you would go around them uh, is but I guess you have other things in your head. This was a terrible tragedy. It has caused more people to ask for elimination of grade crossings. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's what third track is for. Well, well this one is yeah. actually supposed to be eliminated next year, As but it's, it's, it's unfunded. Road, but, um, I don't, you know, the fact that the Hempstead branch at Stewart Manor is not getting eliminated means New High Park Road will still have a grade <laughs> crossing. So it, well, it made sense to do both if you're going to do one. But in any event, okay. um, the MTA grade crossings are good for both the railroad. Um, it's good for the commute, the surrounding community, because you don't have all the horns and the and the, the bells and, and all of that. But it's also good for the municipalities, and they should really be paying for some of the elimination of grade crossings. It shouldn't just be the railroad, because so it benefits everybody. In, I just, in, his you know, testimony, to, in his testimony tomorrow, um, we're calling for expediting, prioritizing, and fully funding um, the elimination of grade crossings. And also, the other thing um, that's been proposed several times before in the legislature is you know, red light cameras at, uh, at um, railroad crossings. And that's been something that's been um, caused, uh, called for more in the Hudson Valley. But I, my understanding is that it was being, re being introduced today. And that's something that we've been calling for through Metro North, but also in the Where would the red light cameras be installed? Uh, at where the crossings are, I mean, they're not red light cameras or speed cameras or crossing cameras or, you know, they would just see, just as an added deterrent. But there was also, when we were looking into this, um, in DOT's budget, that it's something that comes under DOT's budget as much as it comes under MTA's. Exactly. And so getting from that pot of money um, is an important one to look to for... Uh, State dues. State dues. Uh, amazingly, State dues. amazingly, the railroad had a pretty, pretty decent, considering this, the magnitude of this crash, and the fact that two trains rammed into this yeah. vehicle, and that the part of the Westbury platform was dismantled and removed, and tracks were out as well. The fact that they had even partial rush hour service last night, and even more than that this morning, is a real testament to to the crew and, and everybody who worked and President Ang to get the service back. Um, it, it's really amazing. Uh, well, yes. What was also great is that the news media this time did not blame the Long Island Railroad. <laughs> actually, yeah. No, I'm serious. No, no. It actually showed the advertise the PSAs 
that the railroad has been running. I didn't realize that, that, that they were still running them. About, you know, don't go to the crossing, yeah. and don't, it's your life, and everything else. And they actually showed them, at least on, um, on Channel 2 and Channel 7, I believe. Seven. 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 Talked about it and, all, yeah, and, all kinds of municipalities and railroads have put up signs to display. No, but this is actually a, 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 a TV ad, yeah, well, and yeah, it's online, a, like a little cartoon right. thing. That I didn't, that we once saw a long time ago, but I didn't realize that they were still using it. I think them. I saw one, I believe, in Delaware, where where high speed Amtrak trains come through, and the sign said, "Maybe you can beat the train." And then under that, it said, "Maybe you're dead wrong." It's a really yeah. good well, sign. Well, this one also showed a cartoon of of a car actually being crashed into, and just saying, "Don't let this happen to you. Wait your turn." Or Unless, of course, you're fleeing the police. Yes, Marisol. Doesn't the addition of red light cameras, doesn't that have to go through the state legislature? So the legislation is being introduced in the, in the um, I'm not sure if it's, the, the one I read about Newsday today said it was being introduced by a Long Island elected. So is the, I looked at it briefly, but it could. Because I know the city streets. They all yes, yes. reauthorized, so, so I would imagine adding. So as part of the um, as part of the, the executive budget, there were three requirements uh, for the MTA to get its funding. Now, were, were several iterations past that? There was um, congestion pricing, MTA reorganization, and uh, inclusion of speed light and red light cameras. Um, to, you know, throughout the region, not just localities. So that's something that you know it's hard to say to a, a state elected leader, why is this even under you guys' purview? But I kind of did when we were up there on Tuesday, in a nicer way. Um, but that this was something you know that we were definitely looking at, and uh, spoke to Assemblywoman Jaffe's office in, in Rockland County, where yeah, the woman was killed a couple of years ago. Even though it was the wrong turn and ways and, and things like that, but still. Uh, also, there are a number of different kind of better barrier protective protectors that could be used. That there are no spaces. Oh. Well, can you imagine looking at a GPS app like Waze, and it's telling you to take a left, and that left is putting you on a railroad track, but you're not looking at, out to see where you're turning? I mean, really? Well, you see train tracks all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, people, people text all the time. Focus. That's why yeah. they go like that. So, um, so let me let me move on. Um, even though Commissioner Schwartz's um, idea of not getting a fair increase unless performance was upgraded. Nevertheless, um, in a totally separate um, movement or vote yesterday, the board approved new performance metrics, which um, are going to go into effect much later in the year. And, and believe it or not, en envision a 71% improvement in transit on time performance, um, 18,000 a month delay reduction. Um, Wonderful if they can achieve that. Um, no penalty implied if they can't. Um, I asked yesterday what happens if there's a circumstance beyond management's control, such as the two, over two year delay in delivery of the R179s, thus causing the R32s to be kept in service, and which have a miserable MDBF. How does that affect us? And Ronnie said, well, in, in circumstances like that, and that's a perfect example, they would, they would not have to 